Welcome back to Chaos Corner. Stand by, folks. Stand by. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. 25 feet below the surface of the earth. Coming to you live to tape. We have a lot of information. I'm going to give you my own personal view, thoughts, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. What came out of this past weekend in AEW full gear. I've listened to everyone. I've watched the pay-per-view twice. I'll give my own thoughts and opinions. Now, follow me on all social media platforms to find out what I'm talking about. I also had a huge event over the weekend at Type 1 to None, Round 3 for Team CC and our benefit for juvenile diabetes. What an unbelievable night for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, and I was on the play-by-play -play and color commentary with my good friend, The Prodigy, talking Tommy Saban. So that will be on Fight TV. Check your local times and listings for that one for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. A lot of news came out of that, including the retirement match of former WWE legend Mario Mancini with special guest referee for Horsemen, Power and Glory, Pretty Wonderful, and head trainer, Pretty Paul Roma. What a night for Paradise Alley. But that's not why I'm here. I am here to talk about the hottest product in the IWC, and that would AEW Full Gear this past weekend. Fans, follow me on all social media, twi uh, all social media platforms. We're being distracted. We have we have people down here in the studio. The music is on. We're gonna get off the distractions. But hit me up on Twitter at Big Daddy G O C. Bounce over to the profile link. That'll shoot you over to here to Guardian of Chaos on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram at The Guardian of Chaos, of course, on Facebook, and my two different personas, Jay Brony, and of course, Protigio Fidelis El Guardian for all the things that are going on for The Guardian of Chaos, especially here on YouTube. We're going to bounce over all those social media platforms and end up back here for Chaos Corner talking AEW full gear, in my opinion. What an opening, uh, what a start, a little get a little chaotic, pun intended. We do have a live crowd here. The finger sandwiches are out. The bottles of water are out. Hey, listen, we'll, we'll even have something up on the griddle upstairs in Chaos Headquarters if people want to hang around. But remember, it's by invitation only because you'll never get past the front door at the venue uh, if you try to just show up here in the in, in the Black Hills, so to speak, of uh, chaos land. But what we're here to talk about is I've listened to everybody over the weekend. Uh, as I said, I had a, a booking and an appearance myself with the Paradise Four, Paul Roma, Mario Mancini, Paul Perez, Big Steve Tracy. What an incredible event that was live and being taped for Fight TV. So a big shout out to everyone at Paradise. A great card, a great crew, the family worked hard. A lot of big things came out of Paradise Alley. So I didn't get home Saturday uh, uh, till late and was able to catch the end of the uh, Hangman Page and Kenny Omega bout, which you know, what better way to walk into a pay-per-view than at the end and to have Omega lose the title, which, listen, I get it. Everybody predicted Kenny Omega. Not the top, loudest voice, uh, as Don Tony said. I was on the Don Tony show on, on the Q&A and, and, and the roundtable on his pilot episode. Uh, and we were talking about this. I picked Omega and thought he was going to win. Although listening to all the main sources and coming up with my own viewpoint... I'll listen to everybody. I'll listen to JD from New York. I'll listen to Busted Open. I'll listen to Don Tony. I'll listen to the Sala Monster. I'll listen to Sean Ross Sapp. Uh, I'll get news and notes from different people. I even go back and listen to opinions of guys like Jim Cornette or Eric Bischoff. But that I don't take their word. I'm going to take their word and their opinion? No. They know a lot about the industry. They see different things that I don't. I see things they don't. And sometimes we see things the same way. So it's nice to get a lot of local opinions, plus the guys that I go to as my sources here, whether it be PWZ and Rick Del Santo or Don Kincaid at the Kincaid Files. Those are guys that I go to for sources or my guys at Paradise Alley. Matt DeCourt, well-informed. 
Tommy Saban, these guys know the business for young men in the business. They know the ins and the outs of the current day product. And then to throw in my history. And this is where I get my opinions. And that's why this here on this channel is from my viewpoint. Not from anybody else. It's not from Tony Khan's. Not from Busted Open Radio. It's not from anybody else. It's from me. These are my opinions only and what I observe from the pay-per-view. And I'll admit that I haven't been on my game. I've just been catching the news and notes. I certainly haven't watched Raw in, in quite a while. Uh, I know that we have Survivor Series for the WWE coming up this weekend. Uh, one of the old traditional four back in the day when they started pay-per-views. And I'll start off with a little bit of that too. I know we're bouncing all over the place here because I haven't done a live to tape in, in, in a week or so. The traditional four. AEW only has four pay-per-views a year for now. For now, let's see how it happens. They've already reached out to, you know, to Rampage and Elevation. And we already have the the, the Mothership and, and Dynamite. And they have Dark. And they're going to be going to TBS. And so there's a lot of things changing. Who knows? I hope they stay with the four pay-per-views like the WWE used to. Is there any excitement for a Survivor Series this weekend? Is anybody talking about it? I know it's only... Tuesday. Is anybody talking about it heading into Dynamite tomorrow night and NXT tonight? Which I'll admit, since they've changed over to 2.0, I've seen some clips and highlights. I haven't watched it at all, NXT. And I didn't even see some of the uh, bouts in AEW full gear, which is what we're here to cover. I just want to get through my, my opening uh, uh, monologue. I didn't see the Thunder Rosa uh, uh, Sheeta tag team match with Adib and Hader and, and, and the women's match. I heard it was tremendous. I haven't gone back and checked it out. So I'm not going to cover that here. Although I am a huge fan of Thunder Rosa. And, and once uh, uh, her career is directed in the right way and she decides what she wants to do and gets the right offer, Thunder Rosa is the future of women's wrestling. It's going to be a champion. And to see her and Britt Baker or whoever she happens to go uh, put the chains because that's what we do. That represents the career and the guardian of chaos. But back to Thunder Rosa, she's going to be one of the best. There's no two ways about it. So I heard the opening match was good. Hey, listen, Serena Deeb has a future. She's a little green, but she also is a talented young lady. Sheeta, well versed in her in, in her craft and her tactics. And, and haters come a long day, way too. The AEW has to step up their game in the women's division. But that's another story for another time. Uh, Tay Conte is here. We're going to cover that. Uh, uh, Doctor Britt Baker is the champion. So it's improving. It's improving. Ruby Soho, but it hasn't really worked out the way they thought they were going to work. But Back to what I was talking about before I uh, jumped into the mo opening monologue here, which we're at eight minutes. I'll keep the opening monologue under 10 minutes and we'll start our coverage. Thanks for bearing with me. I really, I really, really appreciate it. What a nice cup, huh? The crowd was hot. AEW crowds are so much different than the live events at the WWE. It's what the WWE and WCW was in ECW in the 90s, early 2000s, or how it was in the 80s, or even the 70s when they packed the garden and the fans reacted to the most simple moves, a, a clothesline, a, a body slam. But that's another story for another time. So I did see the Ending first, it's like going to the back of the book and reading the last chapter before you go back and start off in the first chapter. But I couldn't help it. And, oh, Paradise Alley, what do, you, what do you want me to tell you? So I saw that. I'm happy for Hangman Page. A lot of people are saying that this is a long-term booking. That seems to be the phrase that everyone's using, all the new people lately. And hey, no offense, I get it. But I've known long-term booking for 35, 40 years, whatever. That's another story for another time. It's about full gear. The good, the bad, and the ugly here in my review on Chaos Corner. Paige deserves it. The pandemic screwed everything up. They were working on it supposedly even before that. Now, let's remember, Paige and Omega were tag team champions at one time. They made a hell of a tag team. They had one of the best matches, tag team matches in AEW history, if not the best, against the Young Bucks. Young Bucks, uh, Young Bucks, Young Bucks. If you go back and look at it, I'm not sure what was the what was the pay per view. Maybe Revolution or something like that. I mean, it's only been a couple of years. I should remember this stuff. But let's remember. 
I'm in the over 50 demo group. Although I connect with the 18 to 49. Don't get it twisted. Ain't no half step in here for the GOC. So these guys have history. Omega has been on a tier since for the last two years. Whether it be an Impact, New Japan, uh, uh, the, the Forbidden Door, what he's done in AEW, all the different things and places that he's appeared and he's probably burnt out. And that's what everyone said. He's banged up. He's burnt out. It's Paige's time. I'm one of the few, I think, that picked Omega. But like I said, going back on, on the DT show, uh, we talked about that. And he said a lot of people did pick Omega. Not too many people picked Paige. Only the loudest or, or the... Or, or with the most uh, influence picked Page. I, I don't know. I didn't really see it that way. I saw a lot of people picking Hangman Page from the common man to the working man to the elite to, to everybody in between. But that's just what I saw. This, so I wasn't surprised, I guess, although it didn't age well with me because, again, I had Omega. Page has earned it. Page deserves it. So we're going to start off, we'll start off at the end, kind of like I did before we get to the beginning. I did jot down a couple of things. I was up till 4 o'clock almost, 4.30 in the morning doing this review. But I wanted to get it out there because, again, I'm going to admit this. I'm going to say this. I have no problem. I tell it like it is, and I'm going to shoot on you. I haven't been watching a lot of the product. I've been letting it slide, including a little bit of AEW. Uh, you know, back a few months ago, uh, even a month or so ago, even I've been watching it from day one. I have them all on DVR, but I lost a little bit laid back there. I want to get back, and that's why I'm here for full gear. Made sure I watched it. Went back to the previous Dynamites for weeks in a row. You have to catch up with the storylines. So this is what, listen, Page obviously flipped into the ring, gave the buckshot lariat, and that was the finish to pin Kenny Omega. There was a lot of, not a lot, but there was interference. The Young Bucks came out. Where does it leave the future here as I start off at the end, at the beginning, between uh, Hangman Page and, and Kenny Omega? Different things that I wrote down. Guys, bear with me. Different things that I wrote down. It's a beautiful day outside. I think the week is supposed to be good. We're in the mid-November. Uh... We're coming up on Thanksgiving, so let's be thankful for everything that we have, not that we don't have. Uh, my little little PSA there. The different notes that I that I had come up with here. I mean, it obviously, it was an unbelievable matchup. The pay per view at all. I'll give it a hard eight as opposed to a soft seven. I've said that in several different shows, so I'll say it here at Chaos Corner live to tape. Uh, it was one of the best pay-per-views pay AEW's ever had. Now, is it the best? No. Is it the best in the history of the business? No. But the best in AEW history? Top three? Top five for sure? Top three? Let's let's, let's like a, get crazy here in Chaos Corner. So the different things, let me let me adjust the bifocals here. You didn't, you didn't see that I had two pairs on, did you? All right. All right, let's let's not get crazy. These are the old ones. I got I got like five pairs at my age. Of course, you know that Don Callis has to be around. You you saw him as the cameraman on Dynamite at the at the contract signing. Give Callis a lot of credit. I've always had a little respect for Callis and the way he announces and the way he is as a character. That's when he does his best work, and you know the whole connection. We've covered it in past shows. I, I have over seventy five podcasts on here. I have hundreds of videos on Chaos Corner. Uh, let's get the subscribers up. Hit the bell, the notification. Leave a comment. Email me. Inbox me on all those platforms let's get back to the beginning of the end the end of the beginning again i'm not sure the one thing i keep hearing is long-term booking and, and and all the different times and i know this was what aew is about uh, the pacing we're going to get on to that once we get back to the beginning unbelievable what happens but there's always got to be a run-in there's always got to be somebody getting involved i'm not quite sure why we always have to do that uh, they exchanged one wing angels, which was unbelievable. Uh, uh, that in itself, and I know I use that word a, a lot. Let's remember how Hangman Page got here to begin with. Uh, he won the casino ladder match, uh, if you remember correctly. That's how he got here to even earn this shot at Omega. Uh, they exchanged, listen, Omega's snap dragon suplexes. 
I don't think I'd ever want to be on the end of one of those. Uh, the springboard Luger Liger bomb from the top rope by Omega. This is why this guy is considered one of the best in the world and has been voted the best in the world. Whether you love him or hate him, no matter what you think about him, no matter what any other personality thinks about Omega, just to prove that to, to, to do that and his influence from Japan and the different styles, I'll give Omega credit. I'm not his biggest fan by any stretch. I'm, uh, again, we talk about the Tiger uh, drivers, uh, the, the, each each competitor, Hangman and Omega, biting each other a la old school, both busted open in blood. Uh, it's nice to see it and vice versa in the main event. I, I do like that. You see the whole spot where Ref Aubrey came running in after the, the original Ref uh, took a bump or got hurt, whatever it was there. Now, Aubrey's stepping up her game. I got to see, uh, admit, I've seen it a couple of different uh scrums and, and different shows and she's kind of laid back and knows what she's talking about. Uh, step up your game in the ring. So she was there on the spot. Uh, it, this has been going on. People will debate whether it's three years or a year. So I'm going to move on from this. A great match. Zero to ten or four out of five stars. H however you guys want to break down your scale, I'll give this match an eight out of a ten. I'll be a four star match. Kenny Omega, Hangman Page. You saw this coming, or at least a lot of other people did. An unbelievable bout. Uh, nothing more I could say. The crowd stayed alive there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm glad everybody stayed safe in the political climate that we're in, but let's not intertwine. Uh, and yes, an unbelievable bout. And uh, the pin, the buckshot lariat, and the flip in. Nice. Uh, that, it's trademark move. So, and you know, Dark Order, everybody came in to celebrate. Yeah. You know, well deserved, well earned. Where, where, where do we go from here? That's something that we'll talk about. I mean, just to get it out there, uh, Paige is the new champ. He's got plenty of people there that are going to come looking for the belt, whether it be uh, Brian Danielson or uh, MJF. or uh, You guys get where I'm going with here. Let's not get into long-term booking, you know, a, a phrase that we know very well from back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, uh, it, it is what it is. So I'm going to – we started at the end – at the beginning. So now let's go to the beginning. I guess still relatively at the beginning. Live to tape here. Chaos Corner, 20 feet below the surface of the earth. It's great to see everyone here. We have everything to ourselves. You can hear the crew out there and the, uh, definitely out uh, above ground doing all the work because the weather's not bad for this time of year. Mid-November. And I, once again, a big, on a personal note, a big shout out to everyone at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling and, and everything that you did there. Kudos, well show, because pretty soon coming up in a few weeks, once we get into December, right around the corner after Thanksgiving, under pressure, do, 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 all right, get off. We're less than 20 minutes in here. I'll, I'll I'll get portions of this up today. So I hope you stay here for the whole thing. You guys don't have you don't have a choice. All right, let's let's move on. I want to get to the beginning here. We have a lot of information. It was a four hour pay per view. I'm going to get it done here in a half an hour. I really am. I'm going to try to get it done here in a half an hour, keep this whole show in under an hour. It's great to be back to put the information out. Uh, I'm pumped up. I'm amped up. I'm ready. I feel good. Big shout out to all my brothers and sisters out there. I appreciate it. Uh, so Full Gear AEW, we're a couple days after it. We let it sink in. We come up with our own thoughts. We listen to what the IWC has to say, and we form our own opinion. Listen. I've been watching and covering and been a fan of this business in and out 50 years. Coming up here at the change of the calendar, 2021 into 2022, it's going to be 50 years. Well, maybe even a little longer. Am I giving away my age? Well, it doesn't really matter. J.R., Good old JR, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur with the Lucha mask obviously are in the booth. The standards at AEW. And, of course, my good buddy as ring announcer. And, boy, does he look good. And I'm not just saying that because I love Matt DeCourt from Paradise Alley, too. 
But in AEW, it's Justin Roberts, the voice. And fans, I say it every time I, I put in the plug. If you don't go out and get his book, uh, WWE, his, the, uh, you know, look, his journey into the WWE, your backstage pass to his career, which was over 10 years working there. Unbelievable. Uh, I also get to mention, uh, a la through the Jerry Springer show and when we worked together for the WWZ and the AWA superstars and our connection with working with Terry Funk and different things. And Jerry, as I said, Jerry Springer, Justin and I go back when Justin was was a young man, uh, late teens, early 20s. I mean, look at him now. I knew he had it then. So it's great to see that I ended up in his book. I don't know, maybe in the fourth or fifth chapter when the uh, appearance we made at Bally's in Brooklyn as well uh, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, of all people, being at the show. Uh, uh, what a night. It was a great night to, uh, to be there. Uh, good job, Justin Roberts, AEW. Hey, uh, when you come to town, give me a call, will you please? Don't know, kayfabe your boy. Uh, kayfabe again. I got to throw a little, that's what you get here. You get a humor. This is a, a one-man show. See, look, look, I, I got chuckles. Speaking of shows, this was a very fast-paced show. What I noticed, again, it, it was late at night, early in the morning for me, but I, I watched it again. The pacing. Each one of the first three matches, which to me, stole the show. Make no mistake about it, Hangman Page, Kenny Omega, I just covered it. It was an unbelievable for the AEW heavyweight title. Uh, Omega is tremendous. What a match it was. Kenny Omega, perhaps the best grappler in the world. Hangman Page, maybe one of the most underrated. I didn't really see it coming, but I understand it. I get it. I always understood it. So we talked about that, but the... Representing, got to represent... Got to represent. All right, guys, stand, stand still. Please, give me a little, uh, give me a little room here. Uh, that right there, unbelievable, the pacing of the show. Each one of these first three matches, which stole the show for me. Again, we'll get on to Kingston and CM Punk. We'll try to make this quick. I'm bouncing back and forth here. <laughs> the guys are hucksters. If you see the picture, speaking of hucksters, of myself, Paul Perez, and Mario Mancini from... This past weekend, from Type 1 to None at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, that's me familiar. That's family. What a good time. Laughing, jovial, uh, true, authentic, being real. That's what life is all about, keeping those people close. Family, friends, right? Isn't that what we talk about here in, in this tough, tough, trying times? United States, what we're going through politically, uh, socially, economically. Let's stick together. And if you look back, at that's what we are. We're a family at Paradise Alley. I feel the same way. That's how AEW is represented. So you can see the connection there. And it says it has a lot to, to, to be said for that. Each one of these three matches to begin with, MJF and Darby Allen opening up hot. Unbelievable. They went well over 20 minutes, uh, 22 minutes and change, I believe. What a way to open up a pay-per-view. I like it when people start off and open up hot. It's the new thing in the business now. A lot of people start off their shows hot, catch the fans off guard grab them right from the beginning that's the difference between the new school and the old school so this was an unbelievable bout again over 20 minutes the topa suicidas that, that were pulled off by darby allen i can't say enough uh mjf with the pile drivers uh, uh, on the on the ring ape and to darby i thought he almost snapped his neck the different things that i noticed and I'll, in each bout that i talk about i'll give you the good the bad the ugly different maneuvers i'm not going to go through everything and cover that we'll be here for two hours three hours we're trying to take a four hour show and condense it that's what we do here at chaos corner the coffin drops from Darby Allen uh, off the top rope to the outside, and then the turnaround and the coffin drop on the inside. Even though MJF got his knees up, I've said this and been praising Darby Allen back to Evolve Paradise Alley '95, Evolve '95, where the Evolve Super Show merged with Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. That's where Keith Lee and and Darby Allen and several of the uh, Evolve guys that went on to AEW and. Of going on to WWE that were there. You could see it then. The moves and maneuvers they pulled out in that Super Show. It really was unbelievable on iPay-Per-View. Check it out. Evolve Paradise Alley Super Show 95 and the connection there. So I saw it back then. Roma and I and Mario talked about it. Some of the other guys like Matias and Holiday and that we talked about it. You could see the hunger from those guys. I forget some of the other guys that were there, but Email me in, leave in the comment box uh, if you were there and you remember some of the stars in that super show. 
uh, you know, rolling small packages that MJF and Darby did across the ring was fantastic. The chain wrestling, the counters, this is pure classic wrestling. And that's why it went 20 minutes. Uh, you know, Sting at some point is out there. He attacks Wardlow with a bat and beats him all the way backstage to get that BS. Thank God there was no outside inter interference. You know, they're using a skateboard at, at one point. Brass knuckles at the end. Out of nowhere, a beautiful side rollover headlock into a pin. Uh, the brass knucks with the ref, the, 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 th the, the skateboard was thrown out. If I see that correctly and remember that correctly as the highlights, MJF, he did the beautiful old school. Again, this is where I love old school meets new school. The headlock, headlock side rollo into a nice, beautiful pin. One, two, three. What a big win by MJF. That one I called. That one, I, I thought there was going to be outside interference. I'm glad there wasn't. Wardlow, Sting, you know the whole connection. Although, keep an eye on Wardlow. I've been saying that for months. Go back and check out all the information. Watch the past podcasts. You'll see what I'm talking about. What an unbelievable match. What these guys have pulled off. The natural in-ring chemistry between these two was very evident. I enjoyed it. I'll give this a four and a half out of five stars, a nine out of 10 for the current day for what we're doing for this product. It really was something to that. It's, I can't say enough. Unbelievable way to start off. MJF over Darby. MJF is in that title picture. He will be in 2022 your AEW heavyweight champion. You heard it here on Chaos Corner. I'm not saying anything different than a lot of other people have said. But I'm saying something that a lot of people haven't said. And I'm putting myself on record. And I've said it back in past podcasts. When he was doing the whole Jingle Jangle Sinatra, Dean Martin, with uh, Chris Jericho, if you remember correctly. Go back. I've been paying attention. Don't let a little bump in the road ever misguide you from your focus. Remember that. So I thought that was an unbelievable way to start off full gear. We go into, for the AEW Tag Team titles, and the, a, the AAA titles by the former champions, FTR, the AAA Tag Team Champions, with Tully Blanchard against the Lucha Brothers, the current AEW Champions, with Abraham Abrahantas. So both managers you can see are in there and will be a factor in this match at some point right from the beginning. You never let props or anything like that distract you. You still continue to do the show. <laughs> On that point, let me take a quick break here. We're 25 minutes in. Quick. All right, guys, grab a sip of water. You can get up. You can use only the downstairs latrine. Stay with me here. I hope you guys are doing well out there. I'm glad you're here. We're having a lot of fun. I say it every time. We're going to be revamping the studios. We'll be going back for our third change. Let me get a little uh, little juice here, please. It is early in the morning. That's when I seem to have time during the week is early in the morning. But this will be up uh, depending on social media. It really is uh, nice to get a nice cup of job in the morning. All right, I'm not trying to be graphic. This is rated. This is rated PG. Let's get back to AEW full gear. Thanks for being here, guys. Get back in your seat. You don't have to. You could stand up. <laughs> back to full gear. FTR and Tully, Lucha Brothers with Abrahantas. The gold is on the line. Several false finishes. Again, the pacing of these first three matches in and out. No filler, no fluff, no promos, no grabbing a stick. We're in and are out minimal with MJF. And that's what went on in the pacing. The first hour and a half, you barely had a chance to breathe or, in his case, to take a leak to keep it rated PG here. Several false finishes. Phoenix rolling double neck breakers on FTR was unbelievable. Wheeler using a belt on, on Phoenix. Then a brain buster by, by Harwood. The double team maneuvers, the chemistry between these two, not like I thought it was going to be. And I know what you thought I was going to say. 
whether it was in Mexico, and I saw that on YouTube, or whether it was on Full Gear, two great tag teams, perhaps the two best in the world, definitely in the top five in the world, wouldn't you agree, right? FTR and the Lucha Brothers, Phoenix and Pentagon, they don't seem to have that total chemistry. And you can see it. I'm not here to criti criticize, critique. I'm going by the two different matches, seeing how they work against other teams, seeing their chemistry in other teams, and then seeing how they've worked together. Still an unbelievable match. Still probably one of the best on the show, but I'm seeing a little mistiming on some things. Just to be critical, because... I wasn't around during the high flyer days. So now I get to sit here and scout and compare and see different things and stuff that I notice. And that's why it's my twist. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I, mean, I don't care if you're watching or not. I'm going to bring it to you to the truth. But a great match. Uh, a Tully once again intervenes. You knew that was going to happen. Again, we know the significance of what happened on Saturday. It was, and I've heard several different stories, but I was corrected. It definitely was the anniversary of from 2005 and the passing of the great machismo Eddie Guerrero in of all towns and cities and states, Minnesota. So here we are in 2021. Eddie passed away the Latin sensation, the Latin lover, Latino heat, muy caliente. 2005 is the official date of when Eddie passed away because I even had it wrong because I once uh, every now and then we're, you, you got to stay on your game. You got to do your research. And I pride myself on that, but I was corrected. You have to own it. So the big tributes there throughout the whole night. And then Jericho gave a great tribute. And a lot of people mentioned Jericho's tribute later on uh, and, and how he uh, was very emotional talking about Eddie Guerrero and different things. And you could see it and feel it and different things that were reported. I wasn't live, obviously, but I did see it. So an unbelievable match, and, and the different uh, the frog splashes were unbelievable. Phoenix, Penta, the double team top rope. Phoenix jumped off of Penta, cross body onto FTR. One of the best, most exciting maneuvers I've seen. Phoenix, in my opinion, one of the best luchadors in the world, if not the best right now, as good as when Rey Mysterio was at his top. Just my opinion, and that's why you're here. That's where I feel that was the perfect spot. A lot of people said this. I guess I can agree. The different spike pile drivers that came up in this movie. That's where it should have ended. This is where I was confused. And maybe where, even though 50 years in the business, I can be taught a thing or two as well. I'm always learning and with, with booking and different things, whether I learn at Paradise Alley from those guys and things that I pick up my own and my own experiences or learning what people are doing now. But the, the spike tri pile driver, Penta, the bottom line is the Lucha Brothers win. They retain the titles. What an unbelievable matchup. I don't want to miss that. I don't, I don't want you to, to underestimate what I think of the, of the match. Uh, Rick Knox, at some point, just blew the match, wasn't paying attention. I don't know what happened. I feel like maybe it was, again, I sound like I'm being critical on this bout of different things that I noticed. And then when I notice it, and other people confirm it and say, yeah, something was a little up, not exactly what I say or what I thought, then you know something was up. That's where it would have been a perfect ending for the pin right there for the Lucha Brothers and FTR. Again, chemistry a little off, great match. Penta pins with the pile driver on Dasher, okay? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the green mask uh, appears, Tully appears, was the wrong guy pinned. It, it was an odd ending. Rick Knox seemed as confused as a baby at Hooters and maybe had his head up his ass and the whole thing with F. I don't know. I get that angle from back in the day. The mask guy shows up. The, he's revealed. Oh, oh, it's the wrong guy. You restart the match. But I get it. That's the way it's supposed to be. But that's not how it happened. So I'm interested to see on Dynamite where this turns. Again, a great match. I believe. Uh, what did I have noted for this match? I, this match also was a, a, a 20 minute plus match. So that, you know. Different things that I noticed, and that's what caught me, and whether I talked to J.D. or Don Tony or Cronin or other guys that I talked to and listened to, uh, Wrestle Days, different guys like that, 
things that I heard and, and Bully Ray and LaGreca, you listen, you research Mark Henry, you see what they have to say, get on there. I spoke with these guys, Ryan McKinnell and them, and we gave our different opinions. So I know that I'm onto something here. When you feel it, and then people that you respect and admire and listen to also feel the same way. And even if they didn't, it's still my opinion, good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, so Penta and the, the Lucha Brothers and Phoenix end up retaining the title in a good match, but a little off. We go on to Miro and Brian Danielson. Another match, just about 20 minutes. I love this match. I love what Danielson has been doing. He's been starting off a lot of the pay-per-views. He's been coming out on hot. He's been coming out on Rampage. Danielson's career has been reinvigorated in what I see. Some of the matches that Brian Danielson is having here in AEW in the last three months and what I anticipate moving forward, okay, I believe that Danielson has had some of his best matches in his career even when he was in WWE by far. than he's having right now. That's just my opinion. Brian Danielson is going to end up having some matches. And has already had some. That are as good as anything he ever did. For Vince. That's just my opinion. Whether you like it or not. And this proves it. And Miro. Once they got rid of the Game Boy thing, and well, where's Kip Sabian? I don't know, Penelope. I'm, I don't know. It is what it is. But once they got rid of that and realized the true potential and how he left WWE as Rusev, and now you finally got him into Rusev, molded into Miro, this guy's on a roll, and he will be a force in Miro and Wardlow. Is where is where I'm headed. Just my own mind, my own thoughts. Make sense, and I'm just telling you. So I noticed right away Miro's right thigh is wrapped. I don't know if it's a work or not. I hear different things. This is a tournament final match to see who's the number one contender who gets a shot at Hangman Page, who is now the heavyweight champion. So you see that either Miro or Danielson against Page is going to be unbelievable on where AEW is going with their booking and what's happening here. And as long as, as everyone stays... Uh, no, healthy. Both these guys are in great shape for this bout. Miro looks the best he's ever looked, as does Danielson. Miro has a reverse suplex outside on Danielson. Uh, the Miro suplexes have been unbelievable. He used several of them throughout the bout. Uh, big standing power bombs by uh, Miro. Ref Aubrey is in on this match. Uh, Miro's camel clutch submission really was unbelievable. Danielson was near the ropes. He, okay. He gets to the ropes. He really cinched it in. I almost thought, and I said, there's no way they're going to have, after his run and where the future's going, that Danielson would ever submit to this. And again, I did pick this match right before we get on to the finish here. You guys know who won. But for a second there, with the booking, even a guy like me can be fooled. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You tell me. Well, uh, Danielson comes back uh, with an unbelievable cross face, the LaBelle lock, whatever you want to call it that Danielson puts out there. He comes back, now gets hot elbows to the head of Miro while he's down a la MMA. Beautiful strikes there. Big forearms and elbows for Danielson. He's looking really good at his point. Uh, exchanging kicks. At one point, Miro's inviting and taking these martial arts kicks, and both guys with the kicks are unbelievable. This match, again, uh, if I had to score out of 10, I'm going to give this an 8.5, a, a 9 out of 10, and 4 out of 5 stars, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm not on the payroll. I'm not a fanboy. I'm not a shill. I'm just telling you like it is for these first three matches. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in a part one or a part two. This could be a two-part series of Chaos Corner covering AEW Full Gear. Uh, because we don't want to have the overload of information. We want to be able to get it uploaded uh, at a reasonable time today. Because we are live to take uh, 25 feet below the surface of the earth. So as we go on to this match, the top rope suplex, unbelievable by Danielson. This is one of his signature moves. Both these guys look fantastic. And Danielson pins and is now your number one contender. So this is how we start the first three matches. And that sets up Danielson and Hangman Page 
right away. It's just my opinion. It has to be, right? Unbelievable, the pacing of this first three matches. You better have had your snack, your beverage. You should, certainly should have gone to the bathroom because right from pillar to post, whether it was the buy-in, which I've heard, and I'll go back and watch it, the buy-in right to these the opening in these first three matches, bang, 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 one in, one out, minimal fluffer, so to speak, if you get the, the pun in, intended. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm keeping it PG. What, what more do you want? So that's how it starts off in AEW Full Gear as we're 40 minutes in here at Chaos Corner, live to tape, covering AEW Full Gear and throwing a little personal stuff too because that's what you get. Unique, unscripted, one-man show on all social media platforms. I just want to thank you for being here. That's from the bottom of my heart. From It's me. It's me. It's the GOC. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. We go into the Falls Count Anywhere with the Young Bucks and Adam Cole, baby. And again, they come out with Cutler spraying stuff all over the place and Nakazawa. And so there's, there's like five guys and they're going up against Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy, the Jurassic Express. And let me tell you something, Lucha's a monster. He's in great shape. Christian Cage, a veteran that I've had a chance to be with before years ago, an unbelievable guy. A Hall of Famer. That's just, that's my opinion. That's how I believe. Christian's a huge asset to any company. But there's this match, for, and, and listen, the push on Jungle Boy, and you'll see it throughout the match. And the Young Bucks, listen, they started all this. I'm not here to diss them either. But does this match really need to be in here on this pay-per-view? Couldn't have been a dynamite match. And yes, several people have agreed with me. Several people have called me out and not agreed with me. And it was a great high-flying match. The crowd, again, I can't say it, electric, goes crazy for all the high spots, the leg slaps. I love it. It's athleticism. It's unbelievable. I could never get in there and do it. I'm so appreciative of what these guys do. Jungle Boy is a future huge star. Christian Cage is a legend. A Luchasaurus himself is a guy, I don't know how they're booking him or using him, but it's a guy who is an asset at his size and the flexibility and what he can do. Adam Cole is a future champion. He was a champion in the WWE, not used the right way. That's why he's in AEW. There's a big storyline with Adam Cole. Bebe, guys, say it with me. It's a big storyline. He's headed to that championship title pic picture one way or another. And I get the whole of getting the gang back together and who's going to be out and who's going to be in. But does this match really belong here? I'm just saying for a four-hour pay-per-view after those first three matches, again, fast-paced, in and out. Can't catch your breath as a fan, a reporter, the media, hell, even the workers. I like pink. You guys get it, right? That was part of my get up. Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, the biggest, baddest, loudest, most unique pro wrestling manager in the history of the business. I had to throw that in there. But I'll tell you with the pink outfits, I don't know, Young Bucks. This match had everything from pillar to post, from trash cans to thumbtacks. They were all wearing street clothes. It had ladders. Uh, they were going off tables. Uh, Adam Cole was busted open. The, he got tossed through a table. And I know I keep using that. There was a concerto spot, which I really don't like when Edge and Christian were doing it. And, 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 and the Hardys, and the, they keep trying to repeat this. And someone's going to get hurt. And they were all over the arena. And it, it was pure chaos. And a lot of people are using that word lately, chaos. And, I am the guardian of chaos. I, mean, I get it. I'm there to guard the chaos. My phone's available. Hit me up on social media. I'm here. Give me a call. I'm available. But back to the match. The different things, that the concerto shots, the things that I've written down, the different dives to Christian. I don't know what he was trying to prove at his age, but I'll give it to him. The dive off the mezzanine. A lot of people comparing it to Edge and what he used to do in the WWE and all these different comparisons, and I think sometimes people overthink it or listen to too many people like Meltzer and come up with your own thoughts. But I'll give 
Christian credit diving off the mezzanine and it looked okay. So this, this was just a crazy match that was all over the place uh, between uh, Adam Cole, baby. You, you, two chances, third chance, and you guys are out. You won't be back for a live crowd. So all these guys represented themselves. Falls count anywhere. Six-man tag team match all over the place. The bottom line is Jungle Boy pinned Matt Jackson. Outside, after con the concerto shots, concerto shots, and... Again, this could have been someplace else. You see the chaos and pandemonium it's creating here at Chaos Corner. Another match, 20-plus minutes, thereabouts, 18 minutes. Didn't have to be there. We're on 45 minutes ourselves. We come up to the next bout. A lot of controversy with this bout. A lot of things being said. I'm going to leave it right here and stop with part one before I head over to part two. The next match. We're leaving here. We're just leaving the falls, insanity, crazy falls count anywhere between the Young Bucks, Adam Cole, uh, Nakazawa, Cutler, uh, Christian Cage, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express, uh, dives, cheers, ladders. The bottom line is Jungle Boy, Christian Cage, and Luchasaurus. So we're leaving that. And the first three matches of, of AEW, and I'm going to give you guys a chance to take a break. Unlike the full gear pay-per-view of this past weekend, we're heading into black Lucho Mary wearing mask, Malachi Black in that unbelievable entrance. And Andrade with Jose the Associate against that bastard Pac. And Cody Anderson, Cody with Arn Anderson. That's right. I almost said Cody Anderson. Well, you know what Bully Ray said to me uh, 20 years ago, at least a couple of times when we were battling back and forth for the NWA tag team titles and I was managing the Outcast Gillis. He said, get the Guardian of Chaos six spots and don't fuck up five of them. I'm proud of that coming from a two-time Hall of Famer who's on Busted Open Radio, perhaps one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Thank you, Bully Ray. And we will end part one of AEW Full Gear here at Chaos Corner on that note, and we will head into Cody with Arn Anderson and Pac as they take on Andrade and Malachi Bat Black. Unbelievable. You, you, you see I need a break. Don't you dare miss it. Part two, coming right back.